In a world where your name describes your job, the Demon Queen and the world's most powerful hero decide to do something unprecedented and a war using intelligence. Gear up with your sword, your spellbook, and a bag of chips, because it's time to dive into the world of Mayu Mayusha. For 15 years, a war has ravaged between humans and demons. The greatest warrior of the humans, Hero, which I assume is more of a description than an actual name, leaves his group of adventurers without explanation and heads to the Demon King's castle, leader of the enemy army, to put an end to the war. When Hero arrives at the castle, he's surprised to find it deserted, leading him to assume he's walking into a trap set by the Demon King. However, to his astonishment, the Demon King is actually a queen, a beautiful young woman who, instead of fighting, is excited to see our hero. She has been waiting to meet Hero in person and wishes to talk with him instead. Hero refuses to talk, but the young queen has no intention of fighting, leaving our protagonist with no choice but to accept the queen's invitation to dinner. As they talk, she reveals that the war has actually been beneficial to both sides, as their races have set aside their differences to fight a common enemy and have boosted the economy. The poorer towns receive money from the crown to continue fighting, thus ending famine. Hero points out that this is good, as it shows the crown gives for nothing in return, to which the queen corrects that it's not the case, as the nobles arm the towns to keep the demonic hordes from ever reaching the castle, allowing them to continue living their lives of luxury and carefree. Therefore, the war has allowed the powerful and corrupt to abuse the weak. Moreover, no matter which side wins or if the war suddenly ends without compensation for the war's employees, it would lead to a massive civil war to Hero's horror. Since many soldiers trained in the art of killing would be out of work and, not knowing how to do anything else, would use those skills to subjugate the weaker. The queen then shows Hero a vision of a world without wars, where everyone lives in peace, both humans and demons, as the human race's problems are also found on the enemy's side, so a sudden resolution would be disastrous for both races. But the queen has a plan to bring prosperity and lasting peace to both races and wants his help. Although aware that the plan may cost the lives of some, Hero agrees to help the queen and decides to head to her kingdom to start preparations. As he gets ready to leave, our hero notices melancholy on the queen's face, and seeing how the young woman feels alone, he invites her to share his journey, to which a happy queen agrees, both swearing they will always be by each other's side. In the dead of night, two girls run away crying from a village. After teleporting to the human kingdom, the queen and hero arrive at a small farming village called Winterpass, planning to kick off their operations there. They settle in a manner with the help of their most trusted servant, the head maid, since apparently, these folks don't have names and are defined by their jobs, which is kind of sad if you think about it. Anyway, the head maid got a mansion ready in the village for Hiro and the queen to move into, assuming they were married, but Hiro quickly sets her straight. The maid, having paved the way for her queen's arrival, informs the village authorities that a young scientist will settle there to study the land, calling her the Crimson Scholar. To buy time before the war, rumors are spread that the hero and the demon king fought and are recuperating from their injuries. The Crimson Scholar plans to convince the village elder to adopt a four-field crop rotation system to increase production but fails to persuade him. Later that same night, just as our protagonists are about to kiss, they hear a commotion in the stables and find two young sisters hiding there, fleeing a life of servitude. Hero wants to help them, but the head maid refuses at first, disdainfully saying they're no different from bugs that can't control their own lives, says someone named Head Maid, so I guess we're in for some irony in this series. The maid is about to hand the girls over to the authorities, but at Hero's request, the queen tells her to do it tomorrow. Tonight, the girls are to bathe, be given better clothes, and sleep in a bed, which the maid agrees to. After the bath and being fed, the girls ask for asylum in the queen's house. The head maid refuses to grant it, considering them less than human. There, the sisters ask the head maid to teach them to act like humans so they can learn, which she agrees to and takes them under her care since she needs help cleaning the mansion. While the sisters are educated by the scholar, Hero feels somewhat depressed, realizing that unlike the queen, all his talents are for war, making him feel useless. In addition to the sisters, 
The queen also teaches the children of a noble, a warrior, and a merchant about the effects of war on society, who I assume will all be called children, hoping to change their views on it. Thanks to her lessons, the scholar secures another meeting with the village elder, planning to win him over with a secret weapon. It's been three months, and the town has totally bought into the scholar's farming methods. Crimson Scholar and Hero, now rocking the White Swordsman gig, have a sit-down with the nun running the convent by the lake in Lake Nation. They need the church's backing to solidify their power. So, they roll up to the lake, Scholar hands over this mysterious chest to the nuns, along with some instructions. Inside the convent, our heroes stumble upon a bombshell, the head nun is actually Lady Knight, a member of Hero's old crew. She's pissed at our main man for bailing on them and then disappearing. To cover Hero's vanishing act, Crimson Scholar spins this yarn to Lady Knight about finding him on death's door after a showdown with the Demon King, saving his life, and offering protection in return. Lady Knight spills the tea that one of Hero's old buddies, Archer, bounced to serve some royal families down south, and the sorceress took off to the Demon Kingdom to find him. This throws Hero for a loop. Scholar pulls out her secret weapon to Lady Knight, Potatoes. Yep, Potatoes, a crop unheard of in the human kingdom at the time. She pitches the benefits and asks the church to spread the word and teach folks down south how to grow him. Lady Knight, who should technically be called Mother Superior now, but I guess that doesn't fly, agrees and decides to set up shop in our protagonist's town to be closer to the action. The Demon Queen's breadbasket needs some fertilizer now, so Scholar suggests fish guts, but Hero's not keen on getting cozy with the Sea Shogun's turf, a terrifying dude he's tangled with before. Option 2? The Shady Merchant Guild, who've been raking it in during the war, and whom she considers even worse than the Shogun. So, Scholar tosses the Merchant Alliance a bone, a dried compass. They mull over its benefits and decide they need to monopolize it, fearing Scholar might flip and offer the invention to another guild. They debate taking drastic measures against this new player. Back in town, Hero decides to hunt down the sorceress in the Demon Kingdom. Before he jets off, the Queen hooks him up with this badass black armor, orders him to wear it while acting as her enforcer there, and hands him a list of some demon leaders he can trust. He gives her a peck on the cheek and disappears to find his friend, leaving the Queen hanging for a real kiss. Fall season's here since Hero split, and Lady Knight set up shop in the village to teach fencing to Crimson Scholar's students. A member of the Alliance, Young Merchant, drops by to see Scholar, and she pitches another crop, corn. She reckons it'll ramp up humanity's food production even more if the Alliance chips in to fund it. When the Merchant catches wind that Scholar's endgame is a peaceful end to the war, which could be seen as straight-up treason and heresy to the human realms and the church, he signals his hidden assassins to get ready. Little does he know, both the queen and her maid are onto his little game, having kept an eye on the assassins since they showed up. The queen reminds the merchant she's all about the deals, loyalty lies with business over war, king, or church, cause that's the merchant guild's code. The young merchant bites and calls off the attack. But before he skedaddles, he pops the question to Crimson Scholar, much to her embarrassment. Over in Winter Kingdom, Winter Prince, guess what his name is, boasts to Scholar's butler, who's actually Archer in disguise, about how her crops and ideas are boosting the South, leading to economic independence from Central. The Prince is gunning for that independence cause, while the war juiced up his kingdom's economy, it's costing lives. They've been ordered to build a massive naval fleet to reclaim Aurora Island, the only human-controlled territory held by demons. Meanwhile, it's been six months since Hero jetted off to Demon Kingdom and snagged some demon allies. But the Queen's getting antsy, not knowing he's been sneaking back to the village using his teleportation mojo, unbeknownst to her. Only the head maid knows, and he spills to her that he's avoiding meeting with the Queen cause he's hell-bent on being useful. News of the Aurora battle and the war kicking off again pumps up Lady Knight's students, but she tries to warn them about the realities of war. They ain't hearing it. Feeling down, Lady Knight finds solace in the big sister's words, who tells her she wants to learn lots of stuff to become more human. In Gateway City, this massive demon realm metropolis run by humans, 
Our hero, going by the name Black Knight, swoops in to rescue a demon waitress from being hassled by crusaders. He learns from her how most of the human army has been mistreating demons since they took over the city, except for those guarding the eastern fortress. Meanwhile, the expedition fleet sent to recapture Aurora Island is an epic fail, all thanks to their bumbling commander, Knight White King, as demonic krakens wreck most of the fleet, leaving only a handful alive, including Winter Prince, whose dad dies saving Knight White King. Down in the southern nations, most leaders are peeved at Knight White King, who refuses to own up to his screw-ups and tries to pin the blame on the late Winter King. Seen with suspicion by Knight White King cause Crimson Scholar, the Church, and the Alliance are helping Winter Kingdom, Winter Prince takes the throne after his dad, becoming the new Winter King. He calls on Lady Knight to lead a second expedition to recapture Aurora Island. As Lady Knight preps to leave, Scholar spills the beans, she's actually a demon king and wants to be pals. Lady Knight, also the convent head, draws her sword, absolving the queen of lying but saying she has nothing to forgive about her demon nature, being who you are ain't a sin. To her surprise, Lady Knight already knew since Hero spilled the truth earlier and accepts her friendship. New Year Festival rolls around, and after a year apart, Hero and the queen finally reunite. After a solo dance, Hero spills he's got a plan to free Gateway City in a month and finds out she's planning to help humans retake Aurora Island. Hero heads off again, promising to meet her next time on the battlefield. The big sister asks Crimson Scholar why wars exist, and she breaks it down, comparing it to two kids meeting, their differences sparking conflict. But when the big sister argues that conflict doesn't always arise, the queen explains how it can be both good and bad, with war being the nasty version that can be reversed. Meanwhile, with fairy assistance, Black Knight dishes out nightmare illusions to the Crusader armies in Gateway City, messing with their heads and morale, even the Crusader commander regrets being in charge of the terrifying place. Crimson Scholar rolls up to Winter King's camp and offers her help to him and Lady Knight. To counter the Arctic General and his demon sea advantage, Winter Kingdom's forces build a land bridge using floating icebergs, holding them together with salt. Now on even ground, Lady Knight leads Winter Kingdom's armies and secures a beachhead on Aurora Island. Despite their success, they must prepare for a lengthy siege on the Arctic General's fortress. But Winter Kingdom's armies get a surprise assist when Hero teleports to their camp, and the Crusader armies arrive from Gateway City. Turns out, the Crusaders bailed, leading the mercenary general from the Eastern Fortress in charge. Now in control, the general forms a new government with influential demons to maintain peace, making the city the first where humans and demons coexist peacefully. The demons launch a final offensive, only to be defeated when Lady Knight slays the Arctic General. As Winter Kingdom celebrates reclaiming Aurora Island, Winter King rewards Scholar and Knight with titles. Archer meets up with Hero, advising him not to isolate himself due to his powers, he still has friends who care about him. As the second summer arrives, Winter Kingdom has significantly improved, with Crimson Scholar sending one of her students, Young Merchant, to aid Winter King. After training with Lady Knight and trying out Little Sister's carbonated drink, Hero heads to Gateway City as Black Knight to attend a festival. The Crusader commander is judged for cowardly abandoning his post, and after his cowardice and selfishness are exposed, he's sentenced to death. While partying with the Eastern Fortress General, Fire Dragon Princess, daughter of the Fire Dragon Archduke, shows up, much to Hero's dismay, as she considers herself Black Knight's wife. Realizing time is running out, Scholar takes Hero along with Big Sister, now her apprentice, to Iron Nation to showcase a new invention that will improve human education, the printing press. During a night where both the Queen and Lady Knight sleep next to Hero, the Queen reveals to Lady Knight that she'll return to Demon Kingdom to maintain her rule and attend a ritual renewing her right to rule, asking her to protect Hero in her absence. Before she and the Head Maid return to Demon Kingdom, the Queen gives Big Sister a magical ring that will change her appearance to look like her, so she can attend meetings in her place. Meanwhile, the Crusader Commander is rescued by White Kingdom. Bitter about Winter Kingdom's success, White King and the Commander join forces to plot against them. 
young merchant pays a visit to Crimson Scholar's village, and following her instructions, Head May tries to pass herself off as Scholar with the magic ring. They chat, but Hero crashes the party, realizing the merchant saw through the deception. Hero steps in and takes him to Demon Kingdom, where he confesses Scholar is actually the Demon Queen. He shows them Gateway City, now a bustling metropolis inhabited and ruled by humans and demons alike. Fire Dragon Princess throws them a banquet, offering them trading rights in the city in exchange for their help. Meanwhile, the Queen has a brief encounter with the Sorceress in the Outer Library before heading into Ritual Chambers, instructing Head Maid to kill her if she loses her sanity during the process, as she'll emerge a different person. Head Maid agrees, swearing to protect the Queen with her life. Back in the village, Lady Knight offers to be officially dubbed a knight by Hero as a sign of her eternal loyalty. Hero's super uncomfortable with the situation, but moved by his friend's words, reluctantly agrees. Winter King receives a visit from a church representative ordering him to hand over Crimson Scholar, who's been branded a heretic by the newly elected Pope for her blasphemous teachings. He rushes to the village with Archer to warn the others. There, they read the Pope's edict, declaring Scholar and her works heresy and must be punished. Winter King has no choice, and it gets even trickier when he discovers the Queen's absence. Failing to hand her over will also be considered treason to the church. To protect Winter Kingdom from further trouble, Hero devises a plan, having Head Maid, disguised as Scholar, handed over to the church only to be rescued by Hero later. This way, the King will have fulfilled his duty, and the escape will be blamed on a descending faction. Young Merchant learns from his sources that the Central Church and Nations fabricated the heresy accusations against Crimson Scholar because her work helped the South break free from Central's influence. Taking action, he enlists one of Scholar's students, Young Noble, to aid in his plans. In the Demon Kingdom, Head Maid awaits her mistress's return, lamenting her inability to do more for her. Meanwhile, a church emissary arrives to arrest Scholar, unaware she's actually head made disguised. If Hero's plan seemed dumb in theory, it's much worse in practice. In front of a large crowd, head made is accused of heresy, chained, and mistreated. Hero waits for an opportunity to rescue her, but just as head made maiden gets a chance to speak, she reveals to everyone she was once a servant. She tells her story of losing most of her family during her days of servitude and how, thanks to her deity, the Spirit of Light, she was saved by being offered a chance to rise and be a true human. She tells the crowd that the Spirit gave humans the freedom to choose their own destiny and no one has the right to take it away, allowing someone to do so makes them insects. Enraged, the emissary orders the crowd to stone her, but inspired by her words, they stone him and his entourage instead. One of the emissary's guards tries to execute Head Maid, but she's saved by Winter King, who places Scholar under his country's protection and orders the emissary to leave, calling him and the central church corrupt and declaring Scholar a saint. In the distance, Hero, who probably forgot he had a plan, proudly watches as people stand up for themselves, saving him the trouble of having to work. The emissary flees, vowing that Winter Kingdom will pay for its heresy. Meanwhile, a blue-skinned demon has visions of head made that disturb him. In another plane of existence, a mysterious entity laments what's happening at the moment and only wishes to see Hero again. The Southern Realms join forces to challenge the Central Nations, abolishing serfdom and lowering taxes to encourage people to migrate south. The Riverside Convent breaks away from the Central Church to form the True Church of the Spirit of Light, spreading its message through pamphlets and bards. Meanwhile, Young Merchant reads the proclamations of the Southern Realms and is surprised to notice the parchment he's reading isn't ordinary. He recalls Crimson Scholar's promise to create a printing system. To promote their ideas, Head Maid suggests having bards speak about the prosperity of the lands, avoiding mention of Scholar. This way, their message can't be considered heresy, and they can sing freely without fear of church retaliation. The merchant starts buying wheat from central nobles with futures contracts, causing food prices to rise as part of his plans. This drives up seed prices, except in the south, which will soon lead other realms to overbuy grain, causing famine in the lands. Fearing their food supplies will deplete if central keeps importing their food, 
the South enacts trade tariffs and export taxes. Meanwhile, in Gateway City, Fire Dragon Princess informs East Fortress General that the Blue Demon Clan is up to something. Later, she meets with young merchant from the Human Kingdom to buy salt, as the demons are running out. Head May recalls how many years ago, the Demon Queen found in her library the key to ending the war, in the form of a prophecy mentioning Hero. Excited that fate dictated they would meet again, she began to plan. As Central declares war on the South due to their trade restrictions, Hero asks Winter King to buy time before the battle begins while he tries to find a way to avoid unnecessary bloodshed between the two sides. As Young Merchant and Fire Dragon Princess learn that Central plans to introduce a new currency to prevent inflation, the Crusade Commander and White Knight King discover that the teachings of the Scholar are being printed in the Iron Kingdom, so they decide to secretly attack the Kingdom while everyone is busy with the Southern Realms. Winter King and Hero are informed that an army led by the Blue Demon Clan has emerged from the portal to the Demon Kingdom and intends to attack from the south. Hero sets off to confront the Blue Demon Clan alone, allowing the Southern Alliance to focus on the incoming invasion from the north, and to his surprise, he meets the Sorceress on the way. Meanwhile, in the Demon Kingdom, the Queen emerges from the chamber possessed by the spirits of the ancient Demon Kings, and Head Maid manages to push her back inside, despite having her right arm cut off by her. Young Merchant, accompanied by Fire Dragon Princess, shares his intention for the Southern Nations to establish their own currency and expand the Mercantile Alliance's trade with the Demon Kingdom, leveraging this new emerging market. There, Fire Dragon Princess reveals her true self, and that she's an envoy from Gateway City Demons. White Knight Cavalry, led by the Crusade Commander, launches a surprise attack on the Eastern Iron Kingdom in retaliation for their servants leading for the Winter, Ice, and Iron Nations. However, the attack fails thanks to the advanced tactics Young Warrior learned from Crimson Scholar and Lady Knight. Upon learning of the situation, the Sorceress instructs Hero to destroy the magic portal that connects both kingdoms after leading all the Blue Demon army away by teleporting them at once. Hero destroys the portal, and the Sorceress teleports the demons away. Passing through the hole created by the explosion, Hero reaches the Demon Kingdom and realizes that both kingdoms are actually located in the same world, like two sides of a coin. Meanwhile, Lady Knight continues with her plan to have local peasants offer spoil fodder to make the Central Army's horses sick and hinder their plans. Hero finally catches up to the Queen, only to be attacked by her possessed self. The Sorceress appears before the Winter King and hands him instructions from the Crimson Scholar on how to develop a smallpox vaccine that could persuade Central to make peace with the South. Before dozing off from exhaustion, the Sorceress remarks that the offer comes from the hands of the demons. The King and his people hesitate to accept the offer, but the younger merchant tells them that not all demons seek war, and they should consider accepting the offer. Back in the Demon Kingdom, Hero manages to help the Queen force the ancient Demon Kings out of her body. While Hero rebinds Headmaid's arm, he explains to the Queen what has happened since he left the Human Kingdom. Meanwhile, in the Iron Kingdom, the Crusade Commander finds the Maid's sisters in a printing factory and attempts to kill Head Maid, believing she is Crimson Scholar, but he is rescued by a young warrior, who fights the Commander and pushes him from the top floor to his death. In the main army camp, mercenaries grow angry and restless as they don't have enough food, their horses are sick, and central leaders argue over unclaimed war loot instead of attacking the south now. A mercenary captain leads his cavalry to attack the southern army camp, but they are thwarted by Lady Knight and her better-armed cavalry, using hit-and-run tactics. With the arrival of winter, the main army is forced to retreat. Back in the Central Nations, it's revealed that the Blue Demons, along with Central Leaders and the Central Church, are the true conspirators responsible for the war, and they are planning a new crusade against the South with firearms, whose design they stole from one of the Scholar's collaborators in the Iron Nation. Back in the Demon Kingdom, the Queen makes her official appearance before her subjects following her battle with Hero and convenes a meeting with the other Demon Leaders, which some demons see as a sign of large-scale war with humans. The Queen grows frustrated realizing there is still a long way to go to achieve her goal of peace, but Hero comforts her, saying he will accompany her all the way. 
Thanks to the truce between the center and the south, the alliance supplies potatoes to feed the center while the young merchant convinces southern leaders to open trade with the demons. After dinner at the villa with Hero, Lady Knight, and the sisters, the queen and the head maid discuss how they helped humanity but what they didn't expect and are proud of is what head maid did. I assume after all this they'll have given her a raise or at least a week off.